The North American F-86 Sabre was developed for the United States Air Force following the end of World War II. It first flew in 1947 and entered combat in Korea December 1950. The single-seat F-86 was the first U.S. swept-wing fighter. Armament consisted of six 50-caliber machine guns in the nose. Some versions carried two 500-pound bombs under the wings. We had a wonderful gun sight in that F-86. And as soon as that gun sight was locked on, pull the trigger, here are six 50-caliber machine guns chattering at one time. Even could smell the smoke coming back from the guns. The F-86 demonstrated nearly faultless handling and could outdive the enemy with ease. Beginning with the E model, the F-86 featured a hydraulically boosted horizontal stabilizer called a flying tail. This provided full pitch control at even maximum speed. The F-86 was a fantastic airplane to fly from a pilot's point of view. It flew exceedingly well. Just about think what you wanted to do and let go of the controls and the airplane would go ahead and do it just the way you wanted it to. On its very first combat mission on December 17, 1950, an F-86 shot down a MiG-15. This victory began a tally that would end with nearly 560 MiGs destroyed at a loss of only 78 Sabres, an incredible kill ratio of 7 to 1. In 1940, North American Aviation designed the legendary P-51 Mustang in response to the British need for a high-performance fighter aircraft. The Mustang featured the most advanced laminar flow wing and a ducted coolant radiator positioned under the rear fuselage that greatly reduced drag. It was considered by the Royal Air Force to be an outstanding aircraft despite its lack of high altitude performance due to the limitations of the Allison engine. Eventually, the Mustang was fitted with the more powerful Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that could do about 440 miles per hour in level flight. And so they ended up with a very remarkable airplane. Rolls-Royce uh, Merlin had a two-stage, two-speed supercharger, and that gave the Mustang outstanding speed at low altitude, high altitude. It was uh, quite maneuverable, and it had a lot of fuel. It carried six 50 caliber machine guns in the wings and was capable of carrying rockets or 2,000 pounds of ordnance for ground attack missions. When fitted with underwing fuel tanks, the Mustang could escort bombers all the way to their targets and back, a feat no other single engine fighter could perform. The longest mission I ever flew was uh, six hours and 55 minutes on D-Day. and. Uh, but that was all patrolling at, uh, you know, cruising speed, never using very much power. P-51 Mustang, it was a great airplane. The Mustang had a successful career as a fighter, bomber, and a tactical reconnaissance aircraft, and served in every theater of World War II. The Mustang figured importantly in the Korean War, and continued to serve in the air forces of several Central American countries into the 1970s. Over 15,000 P-51s were delivered. It remains an icon of World War II aerial combat. The Curtis P-40 Warhawk first flew in 1939 and was used in great numbers during World War II. The P-40 was essentially a P-36 aircraft refitted with a liquid-cooled, supercharged Allison V-12 engine that did not offer more power than the old radial engine, but allowed for a smaller frontal area that helped to reduce drag. The P-40 was a faster aircraft, uh, better armed, as well as uh, better armor on it so it could take that beating it needed to take. 
The single-seat, low-wing, all-metal fighter was armed with six 50-caliber wing-mounted machine guns and one 500-pound bomb. The P-40 had good agility, especially at high speeds and low altitudes, but was not even comparable to the highly maneuverable Japanese fighters, such as the Nate and Zero. General Chenault's American Volunteer Group, better known as the Flying Tigers, flew P-40s with great success against the Japanese aircraft. The type of attacks he typically set up was to come in at high altitude, make screaming diving attacks against Japanese formations, take the energy that they built up, zoom climb up to a high altitude again, and come back around. He told his pilots, do not dogfight with the Japanese airplanes. Certain death. Even though the P-40 was considered mediocre, it was rugged and reliable enough to play a role with Allied air forces in all theaters of World War II. The Grumman F-6F Hellcat went from design to production in record time with very few modifications and entered service for the U.S. Navy and Marines during World War II in 1943. It was initially developed to modify the F-4F Wildcat, but a completely new design simply replaced it. The single-seat fighter featured a low-mounted wing, backwards retracting landing gear, and better armor protection. Taking advantage of its six 50 caliber machine guns and more than double the fuel capacity of the Wildcat, the Hellcat proved effective at any altitude, despite its additional weight. It's a 100% better plane than the Wildcat, and I flew it in right off the bat and without any difficulty. It was like sitting in the seat of your mother's lap. In its first big air battle, 91 Hellcats fought 50 Japanese Zeros and destroyed 28 for a loss of only two. During the last two years of World War II, the Hellcat was credited with 75% of enemy shot down by U.S. Navy pilots. On April 6, 1945, Lieutenant Bill Hardy became an ace when in a single 70-minute sortie, he engaged and destroyed five Japanese aircraft. I have about equal amount of time and several hundred carrier landings in the Hellcat as well as the Corsair, which were contemporaries. The Corsair is a nicer flying airplane, but I would rather if somebody's shooting at me be in a Hellcat. A Hellcat can't be beat if somebody's shooting at you. In all, the Hellcat destroyed over 5,000 enemy aircrafts and boasted the best kill-to-loss ratio at 19 to 1. The Hellcat was America's all-time top ace-making aircraft, with no less than 307 pilots credited with the destruction of five or more enemy aircraft. The swept-wing MiG-17 was derived from the Soviet MiG-15 design. It first flew in 1950, and deliveries began in 1952, but too late to take part in the Korean War. The MiG-17 was a general-purpose day fighter, armed with three cannon, but could also carry a bomb load under the wings. It was more powerful and maneuverable than its predecessor, and could outturn any operational jet fighter then in existence. The first MiG-17s didn't have an afterburner. Now the 17Es have an, had an afterburner. But if you went vertical with the fight, then you had an advantage with the afterburner that you could light your burner and, and get the fight going vertical instead of going uh, horizontal. In 1956, the MiG-17 became the first missile-armed fighter in Soviet service, equipped with four radar-guided missiles. The MiG-17 saw action with the North Vietnamese from 1965 to 1973 and became a major thorn in the side of the U.S. Air Force and Navy. If you got down to 300 knots and you're setting in a solid turn, you could get right at 4 Gs, but that, if you got more than that, you're going to start losing energy and the whole thing, that MiG-17 just come in and eat you for lunch. With over 9,000 delivered, the MiG-17 was widely exported 
and remained in service in many countries well into the 1970s. The ME-109 was designed by Willy Messerschmitt in Germany and first took flight in 1935. The single-seat, lightweight fighter was of all-metal construction, featuring a closed canopy and retractable landing gear. The ME-109 boasted superb low-speed handling characteristics. Its fuel-injected inline engine could operate at high altitude, but the airplane suffered from lack of range. The ME-109 was a very short-legged airplane. It probably had maybe an hour and a half endurance. It was armed with one 30-millimeter cannon and two 13-millimeter machine guns. The big cannon, if you got hit with that, would have, would have been devastating. It was designed to shoot down bombers. The multi-purpose ME-109 aircraft was used in air-to-air -air and ground attack roles. With nearly 35,000 delivered, the ME-109 was the most widely produced and arguably the most famous German fighter of World War II. The F-8 Crusader was designed by Vought in response to a U.S. Navy requirement for a carrier-based supersonic fighter. It became apparent in the early 50s that, that the Navy needed this capability. The Air Force was ahead of the Navy in that regard with their airplanes, having gotten several supersonic airplanes out there, and it became obvious that that was the way to go. On March 25, 1955, the prototype Crusader first took flight and Mach 1 was exceeded. The single-seat fighter featured a variable incidence wing that could be pivoted up seven degrees and acted as a speed brake to reduce landing speed. It was equipped with a push-button autopilot and a search and fire control radar system for enhanced all-weather operation. Armament consisted of four 20-millimeter cannon and four Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. On July 16, 1957, Major John Glenn set a coast-to-coast -coast speed record of three hours and 23 minutes in a Crusader, making it the first non-stop transcontinental flight to average supersonic speed. In 1962, it was the Crusader that went in low and fast to photograph the Cuban missile sites during the crisis. The Crusader was used by both U.S. Marines and U.S. Navy during the Vietnam War and had a kill ratio of 19 to 3, the best of any American fighter during the war. A patch was issued to commemorate this great plane. You're looking right at a pilot, and the inscription on it is, when you're out of FH, you're out of fighters. And the guy's got a tear in his eye. And, and so that was kind of our feeling. The Crusader was the last American fighter with guns as the primary weapon served as a frontline fighter and photo recon aircraft for over 30 years. The MiG-15 was a single-seat jet fighter developed in the USSR and entered the Soviet Air Force service in 1949. It took part in the first jet versus jet dogfights during the Korean War. It far outperformed the American F-80, but met its match with the F-86 Sabre. The strength in the MiG was uh, basically the fact that he could uh, turn tighter, uh, climb higher, climb faster, had bigger guns, had a computing gun sight in the latter days of the war. The plane's lightweight, swept wings and clean lines gave the MiG-15 a blistering rate of climb as well as exceptional high-altitude performance. The MiG-15 featured a very distinct nose air intake and heavy cannon armament. The MiG carried two 23-millimeter cannons underneath the nose, plus another 37-millimeter cannon underneath the nose. Both cannons were very capable of getting one hit and knocking the air target down. Although the MiG-15 could outclimb, outturn, and fly higher than the F-86 Sabre, 
the Allied pilots were better trained and had better equipment installed in their aircraft, giving them an upper hand advantage that resulted in a lopsided kill ratio of seven MiGs for every one Sabre. The MiG-15 last saw combat in the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. The Nakajima Ki-27, codenamed Nate by the Allies during World War II, was first flown in 1936. The Nate was Japan's first monoplane to see frontline service, first against the Chinese in 1938, then against the Russians in 1939. The low-wing monoplane featured the Nakajima trademark wing with a straight leading edge and tapered trailing edge. It had uh, very low uh, firepower, a couple of machine guns. It had fixed landing gear. It was slow. The one thing that the Nate had was maneuverability. In combat, the Nate would eventually suffer due to the absence of self-sealing fuel tanks and lack of armor protection for the pilot. It was two very different design philosophies between the American fighters and the Japanese fighters. The American fighters are built for muscle strength and the Japanese fighters were built for agility. The Nate escorted bombers in the Pacific during early World War II. It was soon replaced by the Oscar, but continued to serve as a trainer. Near the end of the war, they were equipped with 1,000 pounds of explosives for use as kamikazes. The Mitsubishi A6M0 was designed in response to the Japanese Navy's requirement for a new fighter. The single-seat, low-wing monoplane first appeared over Chongqing in August 1940, when 15 Zeros shot down all defending Chinese fighters. It was the world's first true strategic fighter plane. It could fly missions out to a distance of more than 500 miles, an escort, fight an air battle, and come back. The Zero had an impressive armament that consisted of two 20mm cannon and two 7.7mm machine guns. With its superb agility, the Zero gave the Japanese naval forces almost guaranteed air superiority during the early years of World War II. By 1943, the Zero's light construction and minimal protection for the pilot and fuel tanks would eventually succumb to the introduction of more capable Allied fighters. You could set it on fire with a, with a tracer bullet. It was just high, uh, high magnesium uh, aluminum that would burn at the drop of a hat. By the end of the war, many Zeros had been converted for kamikaze use. With over 10,000 delivered, the Mitsubishi A6M Zero was Japan's most famous wartime aircraft. During World War II, the most widely used fighter by the Imperial Japanese Army Air Force was the Nakajima Ki-43, codenamed Oscar by the Allies. The Oscar was designed to be faster and have a longer range than its predecessor, the Nate. When the Japanese introduced the Oscar, they introduced an airplane that was still slower than the P-40, and the P-40 had a higher roll rate and could also outturn the Oscar above 250 miles an hour. However, under 250 miles an hour, the Oscar was extremely nimble and could easily turn inside a P-40. The all-metal, low-wing Oscar featured an all-around vision canopy and two machine guns. The Oscar is comparable in performance to the Japanese Zero. It turns uh, similar, has similar uh, armament, uh, similar armor in, in that it's very lightly armored. The Oscar tended to disintegrate when hit by heavy 50 caliber American ammunition. Over 5,900 Oscars were delivered during the course of World War II, with the last squadrons being used for both kamikaze and homeland defense. The F-4 Phantom II was designed by McDonnell Aircraft and was the first modern fleet defense fighter for the U.S. Navy. It entered service in 1961 and established 16 speed, altitude, and time to climb records. 
the F-4 was basically designed to shoot beyond visual range with radar-guided missiles. And that, at that time, where we were in history, that a gun would not be needed anymore. And I think anyone would agree, especially the F-4 pilots in Vietnam, that they wish they had a gun. The two-seat twin-jet all-weather aircraft, with top speeds more than twice that of sound, was the first aircraft that could detect, intercept, and destroy a target within its radar range without any assistance from surface-based radar. The Phantom could carry more than 15,000 pounds of weapons, including four Sparrow air-to-air -air missiles. Later on, the F-4E model came out, which had a gun uh, in the F-4, and they were glad to have it. The U.S. Air Force, in need of a new fighter, evaluated the Navy's F-4. Impressed with the results, it soon became the largest customer for the aircraft. During the Vietnam War, the F-4 became a successful MiG killer in both U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy service, achieving a 2.5 to 1 kill ratio over North Vietnamese jets. 